Months of a pandemic proved to be more powerful than nearly 40 years of service. I'm sure many of you are familiar with JNS Cafeteria. It had been in Guilford County since the early 1980s. Most recently in High Point near the Palladium is now closed. Yes, yeah, a place that me and my family have been, and the Nolan family owns it and saw dining preferences changing among younger people. But they saw a path to survival until the effects of COVID just put them under. Bob Buckley has that story in a Project 2021 update tonight. At its peak, this place was cooking. Yes, it was. When we first opened here, uh, we would do around 1,200 customers a day. What Fag Nolan has learned in his 40 years in the restaurant business is that even though people will always have to eat, a lot of people, over a million people through this line, they won't always eat in the same way. Before we opened here, it always fed over 65 million up in Asheville. Wow. So we, we can run them through. His father in law, Grady Allred, began JNS Cafeteria nearly 40 years ago, and Nolan has run it for much of that time making it an institution in the High Point, Hickory, Asheville, and Charlotte areas. The original JNS had 137 employees. And for a restaurant to have 137 employees, it, that's because we did everything from scratch. And then it was a manufacturing plant, what it was, basically. Over the last few years, Nolan has become a mentor to younger restaurateurs like Algin and Cash, and together they saw how cafeterias were falling out of favor with younger customers. So. There were some challenges in the business model. Right. But COVID was the stake in the heart. Is that fair? Pretty to much. JNS recently closed its Greensboro location and has only one of its nine restaurants still open, that one in Asheville. What was tougher during the pandemic? The people not coming through the door or not having enough workers? People coming through the door. You know, we, we put up glass, plex glass all the way down the line. Everybody's wearing masks. We had on gloves. But it was a fear factor there that I've never, other than, you know, literally, it was a fear factor. With government help, JNS survived the last 20 months until Guilford County reinstituted its mask mandate. Uh, we immediately saw an 8% drop in customer counts. I mean, the next day, we had an 8% drop in customer counts. And you didn't have 8% to give. No, we did not. This area is only used one time a day. Algernon hoped that his more modern ideas, like using the facility as a ghost kitchen to produce an entire menu of food that was available only online or with delivery or pickup, could help bridge the gap. But now, even that idea is on hold. I really believe those ideas are still alive. Um, you know, quite frankly, the, the Nolan family made the investment for us to be able to create the, the model for, for what the, the ghost kitchen would look like. Um, that's, that's all still intact. We still have that intellectual capital. We, we, we're not losing. What this community is losing is a place where so many got their first job or maybe a dozen meals or so donated for people who needed a bite. And Algernon is worried that this may not be the last casualty of the pandemic. Well, I mean, there are some real challenges and, and that I think people should recognize that a lot of these locally owned restaurants are family owned restaurants. So you have right now across the triad region, You've got a lot of owners having to think and make tough decisions about what they're going to do with their restaurant. Well, JNS has a huge kitchen, much larger than much larger than most restaurants. And Nolan says he wants to make it available to caterers or food trucks as their kitchen space.